This is where I'm at at the beginning of the, I believe it's the fifth video. You can see not much has changed. Most of the video I'm going to be showing you how I started working on the toes and the started finalizing what I want to do for the fur texture. I haven't gotten a lot done on this just because, like I say in the video, it's the beginning of my busy season. So I'm going to upload this video. I believe it's the fifth video. And then after that, there might be some breaks in the work on the bear. And I'll go back to uploading more um, furniture builds because that is what's taking up most of my time right now. So the other day I dug like a three foot hole here. All these rocks were in that hole because it was an extension of this concrete pad. So managed to get all those out and then I sunk this 4x4 four four in there and it's nestled nicely between the roof and on the ground. And once I get more cement, I'll cement all this in and make it look nice. But for now, this is going to be my support. This is cemented in the ground. It's right now attached to the fence. I'm going to have to get some real long uh, screws to get it through onto the carriage house, but that should be good for now. So what I want to do is replace these supports I have. Once I remove those braces, I do not think this bear is going to fall over at all, but it's better to be safe than sorry, so I propped up these two 2x6s two under the neck. And I've already removed one, but I'm going to remove this one as well as that one up there. And I want to take my saw and flatten this back out a little better because when it rains, it kind of collects all this stuff. I really want this to have a gradual slope to it so it doesn't collect and hold any water. And once that's done, I'll make some permanent braces to go from the back to the 4x4 and that'll be nice because then I'll, once I'm done I'll remove this piece and I can finally start finishing up these legs. So I cut curving this back side until I could notch it out with a chisel and then I cleaned it up with my saw and I cut a piece of 2 by 6 so it fits in there just about perfect. So now I can attach this with some lags, especially these three 2 by 4s if I get it through there because those go all the way through the front. And then this will be super solid and I could run pieces off of this to my 4x4. Four four. that piece connected with some lags through here. I've cut these at an angle so that they fit flush against these pieces. I also removed that other brace as well as the 2x6s holding this up. And this was fairly sturdy before I did that but even with that one brace if you push on this with all your might it barely, barely, barely moves. That one brace done properly is stronger than the four or five I had up here. Um, I could probably get away with just one, but just to be on the safe side, I'm definitely going to put one exactly the same way I did with this one by the bum, and then I could remove this one that goes underneath the legs. Um, I might, might, might at the end of the day put one from the neck to the top, but this one's really strong. I just don't think it needs it. I think I might do since this is kind of scrap I had laying around my shop is make this wider so I could put two bolts in and potentially even switch this to metal so I don't have to worry about rot. But for now that's more than sturdy and without those braces in the way I could kind of clean up the neck and the back will be just about done and in fact I could kind of get the bottom of the head from back here now as well. So a little update on the Husky. It's been running great and it cuts pretty well for about a minute. And then the oiler stops working and I took the bar and the chain off. 
to look at the uh, weep hole on the side here. I have the cover on now, so obviously you can't see it. And the oil just stops coming out of the hole. I notice that if I loosen the oil tank cap, automatically oil starts coming out of that hole. So I thought it was um, a venting problem, and there's this little cartridge right here that you could pop out, and then this little piece of plastic you could also pop out. I cleaned all of this, cleaned out the hole, put it back in, same problem. It will oil for a little bit and then it stops, but as soon as you crack the cap and let some air in, it will start oiling again. I do what I usually do when I'm kind of stuck with a problem. I went online and it seems like these um, 338 XPTs in general have an oiler problem. This was an earlier model, model of this saw and it might just be something I have to deal with. Right now I've got it working pretty well just by every once in a while intermittently I'll crack the tank. It will oil. As soon as I notice um, that the oil's not being thrown off the bar I'll crack the tank again. It's not ideal, but it's getting the job done, and I think the way that things are now, I'm probably not going to mess with this too much more for this video. It might be something I deal with um, in the winter time, but if anybody has had this problem and knows how to fix it, I'm leaning towards it being a venting issue just because it, the oil pumps and works fine when this cap is open it only stops it kind of reminds me if you've ever been in someone's house who has a ba bad venting system on a toilet or a sink and everything kind of bubbles it seems similar to that so i'm not ruling out um, the oil pump or the the worm gear there needing replacement but i'm leaning towards just um, a venting issue and potentially a poor design of this saw in the winter time i might completely break it down again and really clean everything out really well and see if that fixes the problem. I have these two older saws that were my grandfather's that I've been tinkering with for a couple years now, um, trying to get them to work. This one, the bigger one, the 610, they're both McCullough's. This one's a 610, that's a Mini Mac 140. Um, that one, I believe, needs a new ignition coil, and I've kind of been looking for a good deal on eBay. But this one, I tried to get started today, um, and I kind of have moved in the past year or so from being able to tinker on stuff to having somewhat of a good enough working knowledge of these engines to start fixing stuff. So... This one actually had some good sounding rumblings going on when all of a sudden the pull cord started to act a little weird. And this one's a little bit different. The pull cord's actually mounted right by the bar um, on top of the clutch. So I took the assembly off to kind of check on the pull cord and the clutch was, the nut for the clutch was actually loose. So I took it off and um, I'm not going to do a ton of information about these saws for this video, but I did want to show you um, the flywheel key that I fixed on that Husky. I've run it for at least a few hours now, and it's still working fine, so I think it's safe to say that that is fixed. But when I took this clutch off, it has one of those um, removable flywheel, flywheel keys. I wanted to show you how much better that system is. So inside the clutch, you have that little key and with the screwdriver, you could easily pop it out. There's the key. This one's in really good shape. I could put it back in, but if it wasn't, then you could just buy a new part and slide it right back in. Way easier than sanding and filing and making your own key. So I haven't worked on this bear in a little over a week, and that's just because I have to prioritize um, customer work over the bear. Uh, I did end up ordering this die grinder for this. The nice thing about um, not only putting videos on YouTube, but watching lots of videos on YouTube is I do watch a fair amount of chainsaw carving videos. I did that even before I started working on the bear, 
And the nice thing about that is, is even if people aren't telling you what tools they use, you could see in the videos what they're using. And nine times out of 10, if someone is using a die grinder in one of these wood carving videos, they're using one of these Makitas. Um, there's two kinds of this tool, one without variable speed and one with variable speed. I got the variable speed version. This one's like $100 more, which I think is kind of buckus for variable speed. However, it is definitely one of those things that if it comes time to use something and you need the variable speed, it is worth the $100 to have gotten the one with it. So that was kind of my reasoning for this. I had a couple of these burrs that you can use for wood carving on hand, but I ordered this dovetail shaped one because this is what people say is good for making the fur. So I haven't worked on the bear in probably a week and a half to two weeks. One of the reasons was I was waiting for the die grinder to be shipped from Amazon. And the first time ever in my Amazon experience, I lost my package, so it had to get reshipped. I ended up taking about a week to get here. And the other reason is, is um, this is our busiest time of the year. From now until about December, it's just ridiculously busy, very long days. So my free time has been depleted but the current projects I'm working on I'm waiting for things to dry so I'm going to spend the afternoon working on the bear and I filled in probably the last of what I'm going to do on the legs about two weeks ago I'm going to take the saw and trim this flush I'm going to start you could see where I kind of played around with the die grinder with the bear texture but I really like this more um, depth sort of texture when you go deeper into instead of just surface texture kind of looks fake to me sometimes so I think what I'm going to do is clean this clean up this with the saw and then put the carving bar on there and kind of make some broad strokes and then work my way down put get the die grinder and make smaller strokes on top of those broad strokes and then potentially even go down to my Dremel and go over top of that so I'll have different styles and varieties of strokes on the bear. I'll start carving the paws which shouldn't be too bad because I have a photo of it and it really is the basic shape you see here and you see four little nails sticking out of the top of their feet. This is that photo I printed out of the paws. Obviously these are going to be the paws that are up in the air. You could see their back feet. It's just the slightest emphasis of toes and claws sticking out the bottom. So, like I said, it shouldn't be that, that, that difficult to render.
I did about 75% of that foot rough out. I'm going to leave it as is. Um, there's some stuff to do underneath. I still have to do form the toes a little bit and all that. Um, it looks a little weird in this photo because the layers with the plywood kind of makes those striations. But I like to kind of carve stuff like this. I like to do a big chunk of it and then let it sit and come back to it the next day. You'll see things you didn't notice before. The rest of the time working on this, I'm going to start doing um, the patterning of the leg. And I really like the way this looks right here. Um, it's more of like these kind of irregular triangles, which is nice. It makes it look like it's layered and it kind of takes on the natural shape of, of fur instead of kind of just this surface, surface stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my saw with the carving bar. I'm going to kind of rough out big patches of these triangles and then like I said work my way back through the die grinder and probably even the Dremel to add a bunch of depth and see how that looks. of the texture I'm going with. I just kind of did this one section. You can see how the chainsaw makes these bigger kind of triangles and then I go through with the die grander and break them into these smaller parts and then lastly I went through with the Dremel and created these ridges almost like rivers on top of mountains on top of those peaks and it creates this really nice uh, fur like texture and that's I'm pretty happy with it especially for my first go at fur so I think that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the piece um, toward, down at the bottom it started to get hard to get to with the chainsaw but in general this went faster than I thought it would I mean that's it's a huge bear but that was a pretty nice chunk so between that and the foot it took probably two hours to do but I was really a little nervous about how this fur was going to turn out and I'm happy with it so that's good. From far away you could see how it's kind of like almost a wavy pattern going this way which is nice because our even our hair naturally falls in um, strands and patterns so it will I think it will look really good once the whole thing's done with that sort of texture. <laughs> 